Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, three, two, one. Just want to do a little sound check. Clear? Video? Check? We're live, cool, but what about on your end? I want to make sure because for the next 29 minutes, 17 seconds, it's going to be you, me, sorry, you, me, and my handsome friend, Mr. Dr. Ronald Noss. Very nice to meet you. Nice to have you too. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Royce Air Show. Glad that you all are here with us. Episode 55, 56. We are really starting to stack them up. I am so glad that you all are here with me in this journey. For everyone who is new, welcome. For everybody who this is your returning visit, glad to have you back here with us. Big announcement. I'm actually starting my game show coming up this Wednesday at the District Market at Mills 50. So that's going to be exciting. Everything is finished getting together, so just go check it out on Facebook. And I'd love to have you come out and be one of our beta testers. Yes, yes, yes. And I just want to give you all a little PSA as well, too. I use my Facebook mainly for business, mainly for sending out invites and follow-ups. So if you are getting a whole bunch of those invites, just go ahead and delete me off. It's no hard feelings. It is, I won't take it personal. But I am glad that you're here with me today. I'm glad that Mr. Dr. Ronald Noss is here with us as well too. Welcome. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Mr. Doc. How, who are you? Ah, who am I? I'm a retired physician. Uh, I've been retired about five years. And so uh, after I retired, I felt it was probably time for me to take a physical exam. I went to my doctor and had the blood test, came back about a month later, and she said, Doc, I don't know what you've been eating, but it's all wrong. <laughs> but my lab studies were all out of line. So on January the 1st, my wife and I had made the decision to go plant-based, and we went vegan, totally vegan then. Uh, sort of a transition, I guess, over the first year or so. Uh, I think it's difficult to move from a... Uh, omnivore type of diet to a herbivore diet. It's not an easy transition and yet some people can do it overnight because of the desire to remain healthy and to protect the animals and the earth. So uh, there are a lot of uh, variables in why someone would want to go plant-based or vegan. But after she said your lab studies are all out of whack, came back in about a month or two months later, and she was so impressed, she brought one of the medical students in. She said, look at this, and showed the medical student how the difference is, how much difference you can have in a very short period of time moving from a meat, fish, poultry diet into a plant-based diet. It's quite phenomenal. That is impressive. How long did you say that you've been plant-based now? Well, I've been plant-based uh, four and a half years, about four and a half years. But I, I think even in plant-based, we, we started eating a lot of vegan food, and then we trans transitioned to whole foods, and uh, then we transitioned to no oil. So we really are kind of at the top of the heap on the plant-based arena. We've gone to many conferences, listened to many of the uh, uh, leaders in the field. So we're pretty up to speed with most of what's nutritious, what's beneficial, what we should eat, what we shouldn't eat. That's awesome. So you actually retired first and then went vegan. Oh, I can't say that I was a healthy uh, eater <laughs> when I was in practice. And I think most doctors are not. You know, uh, I think doctors in America are... Uh, their training model is based on the disease model. You treat disease. You don't treat the patient. You don't treat the illness. You're not in preventive medicine. And the problem with disease management is that uh, they focus on one little detail, whether it would be sodium in your system or whether it would be a small cut. They just focus on that. But if you have a cut, 
you hurt all over. I mean, that hurts. I mean, you know, if your sodium is out of whack, your whole system is out of whack. So the idea that we've lost this holistic approach in medicine has been eliminated. Now, some of the old Asian countries still kind of promote that, but uh, America has infiltrated the world with its uh, fast food industries, and so uh, the whole world is following this sad uh, standard American diet. And of course, that's the worst diet that you can have. You know, it's uh, it's just a devastating di diet all in all. But you know, the food industry. Uh, is not interested in your in your health, and the health industry is not eating, not interested in what food you eat. So we're in a dilemma here. Wow, that it's funny that you put it that way. That one side is not looking at the other, and the other side that they just don't correlate. That's right. Man, yeah. this is going to be a really interesting discussion, folks. For those of you who are tuning in, very glad to have you all here with us, Miss Amari Spigner. Always a pleasure to have you here with us. That's my fiance, by ah. the way, but don't tell anybody, okay? <laughs> All right. You can keep a secret, right? I can. Mr. Micah, glad you're here with us as well. Lisa, Annette, glad to have you all here with us. I know there's more people in our feed, and as you all continue to trickle in, make sure you just say hi, wave, do a little something, so that way you pop up here. If you have any questions for myself or for our vegan doc, please let us know. We have the great opportunity of having him with us, and... Wow, I really just want to hear more about the vegan lifestyle from your perspective. You've, uh, you, it sounds though plant-based, does that include any type of animal products at all? Because it sounds like it's more from a health standpoint as far as your right. conversion versus <clears throat> uh, the ethics or the environment with it. Can you just expound a little bit well, on that? plant-based doesn't have anything to do with animals. Okay. Um, we, we don't even get near an animal as far as eating. That would be uh, a terrible thing for us to do. Animal products, especially if you cook these animal products, and that's the only way people can eat animal products, we are not designed as a species to eat raw meat. Uh, can you imagine? First of all, our mouth is not designed to rip and tear flesh. And to eat bloody meat uh, comes up with one of the primary emotions, disgust. It's disgusting to us to eat raw, bloody meat. So we cook it, we prepare it, we marinate it. It has all those avenues of disguise. Then we can eat it. But the problem is, as we cook this meat, fish, chicken, poultry, whatever it might be, we develop certain chemicals that are detrimental. They're carcinogenic, like TMAO, transmethyl uh, amine oxalate. Once that is in your body, that's carcinogenic. No wonder we have high levels of cancer, diabetes, heart disease. Heart disease, number one killer in the United States, number one killer. Diabetes, coming up fast on the inside, I'm telling you. When I was in medical school, Never saw a kid with type 2 diabetes. Never saw a kid with metabolic syndrome. And very few were obese or no hypertension. Now it's routine to have a kid with hypertension, diabetes, obesity, and metabolic syndrome. CDC, last couple of years, has lowered the, our life expectancy because they're predicting that the children in the future will die earlier. They're getting sicker earlier, they're getting fatter earlier, and they're dying earlier. In fact, the studies show that if a child is diagnosed, now get this, if a child is diagnosed as a child with diabetes, it cuts off 19 years of their life. Wow. It's impressive. So plant-based eating is the way to go. There's no other avenue. It's the default diet of America. It's the default diet of the world. It's what we're designed to eat. We're herbivores, our teeth, our digestive tract. Our digestive tract is nine times as long as a, a carnivore because a carnivore's got to get rid of that stuff before it putrefies and rots in your system, which means we eat meat, it rots in our system converts to others chemicals that are not good for us that's not good not a good diet wow it's funny 
because you kind of answered the question that I was going to ask you, what I've been asking a lot of our guests that come on this show, is do you think that the U.S. population will be 50% vegan by the year 2050? They have to be. If they're not, by 2060, we'll all be dead. <laughs> We we gotta change. It ha it has to it has to change because we're killing animals at a huge huge number each year, and it's devastating. This idea of humane slaughter. How can you slaughter something humanely? I mean, that's like army intelligence or jumbo shrimp. It doesn't match. It doesn't, it, it doesn't match. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So yeah, 2050, that's probably a good good point because scientific information is slow to change, but the more information that's out there to the population, the more we'll kind of begin to accept it. You know, people don't want to change their behaviors. It's very, very difficult. When we had alcoholic treatment programs, they were 21 days because the insurance company knew that it took at least 21 days for someone to change a behavior. So we got to change behaviors. That's what we got to do. I'm glad that you're on our side with it as far as just getting people in alignment with healthier lifestyles, less, you know, more sustainable. I have hope for the future. Well, sustainable. We If we keep doing this, we're going to kill the earth. Oh, I don't know where I'll move in. Uh... <laughs> I'm right there with you. Yeah. Right there with you. We have something here on the show called the $17 challenge, okay? The $17 challenge, for those of you all who know, I like to meow like a cat, whether it's on this show or just in real life. So I'm going to ask that you meow like a cat at least one time on the show. Three minutes after me uh, describing this explanation, and then you don't have to pay me $17. You want me to meow like a cat, uh, and you said you 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 have a fiance. What's wrong with her? No. <laughs> I mean, uh, meow, meow. No, I can't no, meow no. Like a cat. You gotta wait till two fourteen. Right now, we still got two minutes left. Okay. She uh, right. she's here. She's here with us. She actually just gave a little wave. I see we have more people in the feed. I'm really happy to see that y'all are joining in with us. I'm joined with the vegan doc, and we're having an open discussion about the vegan lifestyle, kind of where it's at, where it's trending, what's going on. So if you have any interjections, if you have any comments, questions, concerns at any time, please feel free to type them out, and we will get to them. So let me ask you, Doc, have you gotten more of your family to kind of get on board with the lifestyle, or how is that going? Well, you know, you're close to your family, and so you communicate with your family frequently, and we've communicated with our families, and no, they won't even, <laughs> they, they totally refuse. I mean, it's like, oh, why, it's why I have a flat forehead, because I keep going like that, you know? I, uh, it's crazy. You, and I tell you, we've got a couple of family members that they're not skinny. These are big people. So uh, you think, well, duh. Well, of course, it's my family, so <laughs> duh, duh sounds to fit. You know. Man, this. But no, it's hard. We just got to keep doing it because we know what the right direction is. Now, my family is not doing that, but we have many individuals when they go to family events, uh, and they say, I'm vegan, uh, sometimes the family will go along with that and give them vegan food, but other times they don't. They say, okay, you gotta eat this, but they don't eat anything, you know? So it's always, whenever you're gonna go to a family event, always be prepared, take your own food, you know? That's a, be prepared, it's like the old Boy Scout model, be prepared. You are absolutely right when it comes to it. Whenever my fiance and I get invited out to our family functions, especially in particularly for the holidays, right? we already know that we have got to bring our own stuff. Right. And then there's going to be the slew of questions that comes with it. And I enjoy it personally. My fiance, she doesn't. She's not really about the whole conflict. Now, one of the things I've learned in this is that in the transition, in getting somebody to transition to vegan food, we buy them vegan items from the grocery store and we give them to them. 
and th they'll try it. And we did this with a close friend of ours the other day, and she tried it and texted us the next day, said, it's wonderful, where can I buy it? So moving in that direction, I think, you know, we may have to buy some uh, asparagus spears for some people. I don't know, some sweet potatoes, wonderful food, sweet potatoes. Uh, the idea that starches are bad things, they're not. People have lived on starches for hundreds of, of years, thousands of years. I mean, that's what people in Africa eat. Uh, people in Okinawa, the blue zones, sweet potatoes. They didn't eat fish. There was some fish, but they, they grew sweet potatoes. Where do you it's, think that notion came from, that starches are bad and that people are kind of almost equating that. I've heard that argument where people say, well, what are you going to do about starches and all this if you, you know, if I give up meat? Well, we're, we're, we're a very susceptible species. Uh, if I told you you were good looking, you'd believe it. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, y'all would believe it too, right? <laughs> well, he is good looking. Okay? <laughs> he is good looking. But, uh, but if I told you you were ugly and you said, no, I'm not, but you would think about it for the rest of the day. Mm. You said, why did he think I was ugly? So we're very susceptible to information that's given to us. So the food industry knows that. So the food industry has really hijacked our brains. I mean, they convince us that milk, it does the body good. It doesn't do anybody any good. It doesn't, you know, and uh, beef, it's what for dinner. Well, it shouldn't be for dinner. It shouldn't even be on your plate. It should never be on your plate. Uh, you know, all egg, the incredible edible egg. It's terrible. Uh, one egg a day is like smoking cigarettes. It's the same mm. thing. You get the same disease later on. I mean, one serving of lunch meat per day increases your ability to get diabetes by 51%. Diabetes with meat. So it's not the sugar that really causes the diabetes. It's the fat. The fat gets in the cells, blocks up the cells, which doesn't allow insulin to open the key to allow glucose to come in. So that's why we call it insulin resistant because of the fat cells inside the cell that blocks the, the insulin from unlocking the door to allow glucose to be transmitted in so that the cells can use the glucose for energy. Sugar doesn't cause diabetes. In fact, there was a fellow named Walter Kempner, Kempner a doctor in the in 19, late 40s at Duke University who had the Kemper diet, and he got the walking dead, and he would treat them with rice, sugar, and fruit, and they all got better. Why? Everything in there is plant-based, including the sugar, even though it was raw and processed. Wow. Impressive. Plant-based is the way to go. Plant-based is the way to go. I like, I, I, I really feel that the vegan direction wants to go more with that plant-based. I do feel that there are some people that are monopolizing and using a lot of people's addiction for food such as burgers and steaks and right, things right. such as that. Right. And I think it's in a way to kind of help wean them off of the animal craving. But I am hoping to see more of us just kind of go in that plant-based direction once we've kind of accepted that whole vegan team type deal. Yeah, I think it's a transition. Yeah, I think we're headed in the right direction. No doubt about that. Like you said, uh, years ago it was 1% of the population. Now it's 6%. Uh, who knows what uh, the end of uh, 2018 uh, with this TV program, it's going to jump up. Who knows how far? That's what I'm hoping for. That is the goal. That's the plan. Whenever people ask, why are you doing this? Because it literally, for me, being vegan is just the new norm now. At one point, it was always looked at as like this crazy, radical, like, ah, oh, you're insane type deal. But seriously, if you just look at it, uh, look at it from a health perspective, look at it from an environmental and even from the animal's point of view, it literally just makes the most sense. Let's take a look at it. Let's look at it from a health perspective. Vegan, plant-based. Okay, to be happy, you got to be healthy. Plain and simple. I mean, I never had a sick patient that was healthy. <laughs> you know, I, I never had a sick patient that was happy. 
So healthy and happy go together. Sickness and health don't go together. Sickness and happiness don't go together. So what we have to do is if we take a look at who lives the longest and who lives the healthiest, your plant-based people will not develop diabetes, they'll not develop cancer, uh, uh, well, they will, perhaps, in a small percentage. There is some genetic trait still. A lot of people feel that genetics is the cause. It's not the cause. The gun might be loaded, but you have the ability to pull the trigger. Mm. Okay? Uh, so what, what we're going to find is that these industries that are promoting vegan-type foods, they're nothing but industries that promoted meat and chicken and things. They're the same industries, they're, move, they're moving into it. Tyson Foods just bought into one of the plant-based foods. Um, and they're moving into it, they know it, but they're going to alter the food. Anytime you process food, you break down the phytonutrients and you eliminate the whole food concept. So let me ask you a question, because my fiance and I had, we didn't know what the correct answer was. If I was to eat something such as hummus, uh -huh. is that considered plant-based food, or is that just kind of more of on the junk food side? Well, vegan? hummus. Well, here's the problem. Hummus is wonderful because it's made from chickpeas, and it's a chickpeas. Is a, you know, it's a legume. It's a, a great food, uh, but they add oil with it to make it tasty to make it slide down your throat nice and easy. Uh, but oil has a problem. Oil, first of all, is condensed or processed food. So you're condensing the saturated fat content, especially with olive oil, canola oil, um, you know, and uh, coconut milk. Uh, it, it's high in saturated fat. But get away from the coconut milk, back to the oils. Oils have a problem within the body. They affect the cardiovascular system, they block nitrous oxide from being produced. And nitrous oxide is a substance in the body which allows the vessels to expand and contract. Expand and contract. And that's what makes us healthy. Expand, contract. So they make it rigid. And as it's rigid, plaque forms on the inside. We develop atherosclerosis, hypertension, heart disease, and die. Not a good, not a good process, okay? So you don't want to eat oil, but that's a hard thing to move away from, getting away from oil. My wife and I took a cooking class that told us, taught us how to cook without oil. And you can. It's very easy. I mean, think of it. We didn't have oil to cook with years ago, a hundred years ago, and we never ate meat. Meat might have been a, a substance we had once a week if we had it at all. It was for the high class people who had gout, sickness, and died early. All the kings and queens died early. You know, they didn't, they didn't last until 90. We're supposed to live to around 100. People are dying at the age of 50, 60 now. I think, I think it's really interesting that you had said earlier when there's a lot of people, you know, you're having to test these kids for hypertension and a lot of different other diseases that they didn't have whenever you were, you know, first started studying for the medical right. profession right. back in the day. How that That's a scary and alarming statistic. All you have to do is look at a school a schoolyard, you'll see <laughs> fat kids, and fat kids lead to death and dying. Uh, it's... it's uh, that's the way it is. I mean, the fatter we are, the quicker we die. Wow. Plain and simple. What a great way to put it. And now that makes me feel a lot better with my nice slim physique. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live for a good while. That's the plan. That is the plan. And you'll live healthy. You won't have the pain and discomfort that comes along with illness. There's not an illness in the world that doesn't have pain with it. And you want to eliminate pain. You want to be healthy. You know, if you die early, it's better to die, uh, you know, early healthy as opposed to dying late. And we get these chronic illnesses early. For So uh, I think the American population now, over the age of 65, is taking like eight medications a day, somewhere on an average, at least five, you know. I, I'm almost off all medication. Uh, I was on Lipitor. I was on uh, blood pressure medicine. Uh, 
I was on uh, a medicine for prostate, which I still take, but uh, you know, I don't take any uh, other substances other than a little B12 about once, oh, maybe once a week, once a month, I, depending. Uh, B12 is the only thing that we can't get from plants. We can get everything else, including where do you get your protein? protein. Oh, that's the <laughs> million dollar question. Right, right. <laughs> Where do you get your protein? Well, yeah, uh, pr the only place you can get protein is plants. Plants are the only thing that make protein. They collect the nitrogen from the air. They convert it to amino acid. Amino acids convert to protein. And cows and animals eat the protein. We eat the, And for example, if an animal ate us for the protein, they would get protein because we eat plants and plants convert to, uh, we, that's where we get our muscles. Muscles are made from protein. So this idea that you need protein to build muscles, baloney. There's a new movie coming out, hopefully later this year, called The Game Changers. Yes. And uh, it's going to be phenomenal. Um, uh, it's, it's just going to be great. And you'll see how these athletes, we have huge numbers of professional athletes that, now these, that, that's that bro mentality that you get in the locker room. Now we, the bro mentality is saying, these vegan guys, they're strong. In fact, I was just told, I believe it was yesterday, that I was listening to a podcast from PCRM, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, and they said uh, that the entire uh, offensive line, I think, of the Tennessee Titans is all vegan. Wow. I'm, I'm anxious to see what they do this year. I just got goosebumps from that. That is awesome. Yeah. The whole offensive line, maybe it's the defensive. One of the, anyway, a lot of pro athletes are turning to plant-based food. It's, it's the recovery time because you eliminate inflammation. Junk food causes inflammatory processes. Plant-based eliminates inflammation. There's even that bodybuilding competition going on in Miami this year, the first ever all vegan bodybuilding competition. So I'm excited for something like that to kind of show more people that, hey, you can have these big, strong guys playing I football. I wonder why I wasn't invited. <laughs> <laughs> Me, well, you and I, we can uh, work out together. Right. To kind of, yeah. Right. Get ready to yeah. show them that you can be a talk show host, you can be a doctor, and be qualified for that as well, well yeah. too. Here, look, look. I don't I'll, know. Yo, if y'all see this, I'm I'm 81 years old. 81 so, and yeah. still cut. Well, yeah. Because look, if you look back in prehistoric, you didn't see fat Neanderthals. They didn't run around. They weren't fat. But you also don't see fat animals. If we eat the right foods, we maintain a normal physical status. We eat the right foods. If you eat the right foods, folk. It's funny because you're having problems with your family telling them about, uh, you know, kind of introducing them, hey, this is right. what we actually are meant to do. I'm in the same boat with you. Right. And it comes to the people who need it the most. Literally the people who need it the most are kind of in the most resistance with it. Yeah. So I feel your pain with that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we got to keep trying, you know. We got to uh, keep trying. Uh, because when you convert somebody and they say, you know, uh, I've decided to become vegan or I'm going to go plant-based, it's really a wonderful feeling. It's like uh, going into the hospital and uh, a patient says, Doc, you saved my life. Because it's the same thing. We've saved their life by converting them from animal products to plant-based products. That is the best analogy I have ever heard about that. And now, just so you know, I'm gonna to have to use it on my shows moving forward, okay? I can't cut you a royalty check because, oh, yeah, I'm yeah, really <laughs> sorry I'm about retired. that. I need that now. <laughs> Doc, I brought you on the show because I needed a checkup. I need, um, you know, I need all of your money. That's that's why you're here on the show yeah, today. Right. <laughs> Good luck with that. Um, <laughs> We're in the same boat. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. It's cool. It is cool. I see that you have a ukulele here as well, too. Mm. I was hoping that, you know, maybe you could give us a little something, something. Have you all ever heard the vegan doc play ukulele? Well, you're here on the Royce Air Show, so it's about to happen. Enjoy. Hey, good too. Solid blue. Ten transistors in each shoe has in it my medicine, my gal. Loose side nose, rust proof toes, when her antenna glows. Oh, she's the cutest Martian gal. You know she promised me faithfully she wouldn't stray. Come 
from the dawn, she was gone, 18 billion miles away. Her stirring wheel has sex appeal, her evening gown is stainless steel. Has anybody seen my gown? <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show Roy, with us my today. Pleasure. Absolutely. I appreciate y'all for joining us as well. This is the first time I get my $17 because Doc forgot to me out. Isn't that great, folks? Yes! <laughs> that is awesome. I hope that you all come and tune in with us tomorrow. Would you like to be a guest on the show? Send us a message on our Royce Air Show Facebook page and we will get right back with you. Tomorrow's guest, she's a community leader and she's with the Sunrise Movement, Miss Lenata Layton. I look forward to seeing you all then. Royce Ayers Ashcroft signing out.